In this video, we are going to teach you everything you need to know to get started on Rhett Paladin in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, the best talents, the best glyphs, the best gear, the professions, and of course, the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is gonna be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, without a doubt, the best overall race for Red Paladin and Cataclysm is human, due to its active racial called Will to Survive, which essentially kind of acts like a PvP trinket, and it removes all CC when it's pressed. This gives humans the ability to play with double damage trinkets, which gives them even more burst damage, especially in later seasons when PvE gear becomes more powerful. While Horde is overall less desirable, Tarin is likely your best bet, not just because of War Stomp, but also because of Endurance. Having some of that extra HP might seem minor, but since you're likely going to be a kill target in most games, any additional defensive bulk is definitely beneficial. But overall, if you want to be as competitive as possible, you're going to stick to human for PvP. So moving on, talents work slightly different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything you need to know. First up, you'll need to spend 31 points into the Retribution Tree before putting any points in Holy or Protection. Now, with that in mind, Paladins have two distinct builds in Cataclysm, but we're going to start out with the more conventional option, which is ideal when playing with another DPS and a healer in 3v3. Our other build is going to center around triple DPS and double DPS 2v2 comps, but there are some talents in both builds that you definitely don't want to pass up. The first is Long Arm of the Law. This is a crucial talent for your mobility giving you a 45% speed increase when you cast Judgment on targets further away. On the row below, there is a crucial defensive talent called Sacred Shield, which functions kind of like a cheat death mechanic on a 60 second internal cooldown. Again, because you're going to often be a kill target, this is definitely going to be needed. Directly below is another vital talent, Selfless Healer. This will increase Word of Glory healing when it's used on targets other than yourself, and it's going to give you up to 12% increased damage based on Holy Power spent. This talent has synergy with Last Word on the Holy Tree, which increases the crit chance of Word of Glory on targets who are low on HP. Knowing how and when to play with these two talents is crucial for climbing, and is something we cover in our Ret Paladin course, so be sure to go out to the website and check it out. At the bottom of the Ret Tree, you might notice we only put one point into Acts of Service, now, this is intentional since we only care about cleanse, which acts as a slow removal, which we can simply get with a one point investment. From your standard build, your flexible points come from Seals of the Pure and the Prot Tree. This talent gives you the best sustained damage. You could remove these two points and put them into Divinity if you want more healing, or you could put them in Blazing Light for more burst damage when you have an Art of War proc. And speaking of which, if you're playing triple DPS in 3v3 or even double DPS in 2v2, your main build will change slightly and there is one talent adjustment that you should make. Removing one point in Guardian's Favor for an additional point in the Art of War. This overall will give you more damage, which is vital. Since in most triple DPS games, you won't be able to benefit from having a two minute bop. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed just a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional Prime Glyph slots on top of Major and Minor. For Ret Paladin, you're going to have two that will never change regardless of build, and they are Glyph of Templar's Verdict and Word of Glory. Glyph of Templar's Verdict is crucial since it gives you more burst damage on your primary spender. 
And as a class that lacks Immortal Strike, you are entirely dependent on doing as much damage in the shortest window possible. And if you want to learn how to properly burst as a Rhett Paladin, we cover all those sequences at skillcap.com. Anyway, Glyph of Word of Glory is also mandatory because Rhett Paladin is more of a support class in Cataclysm and routinely needs to off-heal regardless of bracket and matchup. For your third Glyph slot, use Seal of Truth if you're below the Expertise cap, which we'll cover in the next section. Or use Glyph of Judgment if you don't need any more Expertise and you want more damage. For the most part, your major Glyphs never change and include Hammer of Justice for increased CC range, Cleansing, which is useful in matchups where you'll need to remove snares, diseases, or poisons quite often, and then Turn Evil, which allows you to instantly CC DK pets and Warlock Demons. The only other potentially alternative option for major glyphs is Divine Protection, which swaps the physical damage reduction for Magic DR. This is only useful for duels, and we wouldn't really recommend this for random arena queuing. Minor glyphs are less impactful overall, but you're definitely going to want Glyph of Blessing of Might and Kings just in case you need to rebuff mid-game. Lastly, you might want to use Glyph of Insight and the rare chance you need to change your seal mid-game too. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Selfless Healer is a fantastic talent, right? It's that one that drops our Word of Glory down to a 10 second cooldown, which allows us way more survivability. Well, that's not its only purpose, as if you read the second part of its tooltip, it can also increase our damage by up to 12% every time we use Word of Glory. Now, as we all know, modifier stacking is crazy, and boy, do we have a lot of them. But imagine adding a flat 12% more damage to your Wings Burst. <laughs> Now that's a deadly combo. But how can we pull this off without wasting our holy power, you might wonder? Well, it all comes from divine purpose. Imagine you're ramping up for your wings burst, and as you're pressing crusader strikes and filling in the other globals with judgments and exorcisms, you may find yourself gaining a divine purpose proc. And since Zealotry, one of our main burst buttons, doesn't actually consume our holy power when used, we can use this divine purpose proc on Word of Glory which will result in us gaining not only the damage increase, but also topping us off so we can stay offensive in our burst window for longer. Following this Word of Glory cast, we can then fall back into our burst sequence by pressing Inquisition, followed by Crusader Strike. But this time, we've got an additional 12% damage bonus. Now Divine Purpose isn't something you should always fish for, and the majority of your wings are going to be without this additional damage increase. But when it works out, <laughs> and the stars align, you'll definitely feel the difference. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9, starting with your stat priority. Ideally, you want as much strength as possible while hitting some key breakpoints, including at least 5% hit. After this, your goal is to get at least 3,500 resilience. But don't be afraid to get more either. Then your most important secondary is crit, followed by mastery, and then haste. Now, you might have noticed that we skipped over expertise. You want to get at least 20 expertise rating, but do keep in mind that you'll get 10 for free when using the Seal of Truth glyph and 3 for free as a human while equipping swords or maces. Before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. Now, despite what you might have heard, most of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP in Season 9. Your main pieces will all be Vicious Gladiator's gear, which includes the scaled helmet, shoulders, chest piece, gauntlets, and then leg guards. For your off pieces, aim to get the Vicious Gladiator's Cloak of Prowess, Arm Plates of Proficiency, Girdle of Cruelty, and then War Boots of Cruelty. For your jewelry slots, look to get the Vicious Gladiator's Choker of Accuracy for your neck, and then a Vicious Ring of Accuracy, and then another Vicious Signet of Cruelty. Your best trinkets will depend on your race. For humans, aim to get the Heart of Rage from Heroic Blackwing Descent, and then use the Vicious Badge of Victory as your second trinket. If you can't do PvE, simply swap the Heart of Rage to a second PvP trinket. 
Now, if you're not human, then aim to play with the vicious PvP medallion with resilience and then either the badge or heart of rage. For your weapon, pick up the vicious bone grinder or great sword if you're human, which will allow you to benefit from mace or sword specialization. And finally, for your relic slot, use the vicious gladiator's relic of conquest. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your caps and reforge any secondary stats to hit if you're below the 5 to 7% cap, prioritizing reforging out of mastery or haste if possible. If you're above the hit cap, then any excess hit should be reforged into crit. Okay, so now with all your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants will not change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet and shoulder enchants will both come from PvP and is going to be the Arcanum and Great Inscription of Vicious Strength. These are both acquired with honor. Then use Greater Critical Strike on your cloak, Mighty Resilience on your chest, Major Strength on bracers, and then Mighty Strength on gloves, and Precision on boots, if below the hit cap. For your high ticket items, you're going to want Dragon Scale Leg Armor on your legs, and then a weapon chain on your weapon. You should also carry around a second weapon with landslide in case you're playing against a team without a disarm. And finally, be sure to buy a belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get everything gymmed. For our meta socket, we're going to want to use reverberating shadow spirit diamond for maximum strength and bonus crit damage. Then in red slots, we're going to want to use resplendent ember topaz or bold inferno rubies, depending on our current resilience needs. If you're non-human and wearing a Resilience Trinket, you can likely use Pure Strength Gems here. And in blue, we're going to use Etch Demon's Eye, reforging hit off our gear in case we go above the cap. And then in yellow slots, we're going to want Mystic Amber Jewel to hit our Resilience needs. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few obvious choices. Overall, your best two professions are Blacksmithing and Jewel Crafting, since they both offer flat increases to stats. Blacksmiths get an additional gem socket on their bracer and gloves, while jewel crafters get exclusive epic gems. The reason why this profession combo is ideal is because it'll give you exactly the stats you want and is more consistent than any proc-based profession. One alternative option is Tailory, which offers the Sword Guard Embroidery Cloak Enchant, granting 1,000 attack power as a proc, which can then be stacked with other damage modifiers in order to do crazy burst. The only problem with this effect is that it can proc at unfortunate times, which is why we prefer the consistency of JC and blacksmithing. Otherwise, you could go engineering for its exclusive glove enchant, whose on-use effect can be stacked with a proc trinket if you're wearing one, but it's going to likely share a cooldown with the PvP badge trinket. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. Red Paladins tend to be macro heavy given the sheer amount of utility and CC that they have. And as a starter, you're going to want focus macros for your main CC spells, including Hammer of Justice, Rebuke, and Repentance. You could then do the same with Arena 123, but here prioritize Hammer of Justice and Repentance over Rebuke if you can't afford the keybind space. To cover your utility, you're going to need Party 1-2 macros for the following spells. Cleanse, Hand of Freedom, Hand of Protection, Hand of Sacrifice, and finally, Word of Glory. This is going to allow you to assist your teammates seamlessly without needing to drop your target. You might also want to create a player macro to use some spells on yourself, prioritizing freedom and cleanse. Then you should make the following macro to automatically target and fear DK pets. Alternatively, you can simply use a mouse over macro to turn evil. Then make a good old fashioned swifty one shot macro to automatically pop all your damage modifiers. And finally, consider making Cancel Aura macros for Divine Plea and even Divine Shield or Bop, both to prevent these buffs from being stolen or to quickly remove the damage penalty on Divine Shield if you need to score a kill. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.